Station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We're ready for the event. Marines Media, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. The name, the reputation, the title of the U.S. Godspeed, Semper Fidelis. Station, this is Sergeant Annika Moody with Marines Media. How do you hear me? Sergeant Moody, we got you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. Awesome, thank you. So, good morning, I'm Sergeant Annika Moody, and welcome to this live broadcast with NASA astronaut and retired Marine Colonel Randy Bresnik. Bresnik is currently serving as commander aboard the International Space Station. How are you doing, sir? It's a fine amphibious day up here on the space station. That's awesome. So let's get down to it. My very first serious question, Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Please tell me you guys are deep frying a turkey up there. Well, I'm up here with uh, former Marine Joe Acaba and uh, retired Army Colonel Mark Vandehei, and we're going to celebrate, you know, a lot like we did when we were deployed uh, in the service. Uh, we've got some some good food up here, some goodies from home, and we're going to get together with our, the rest of our crew, our Italian uh, crewmate and our two Russian crewmates, and we're going to celebrate and give thanks for, for all that we have and the fact that we're able to live and work up here and serve our country uh, in another way. That sounds perfect to me. So other than that, what's it like being on the International Space Station? It's awesome. It's, uh, it's a great place to, uh, to live and it's quite the privilege, but you know, we're up here to, uh, to conduct a lot of science. And so it's really every day is a challenge. We try new things out, we're learning a lot. But it is a great place to live and work, and I hope more people get a chance to do it. I hope more people get to, too. It sounds like an awesome gig. I'd love to be in space. So this question is to you. What do you think past generations of Marines would have thought about Marines going into space? I think there might have been quite a few jokes about Marines going into space before we actually did it. Um, but it, it's always been, you know, amazing to see that, you know, we had John Glenn in the first astronaut class and there was a Marine in, in every single class uh, except for one. And that we've been a part of that part of the, the country's mission, whether it's, you know, fighting our nation's battles or, you know, exploring space uh, and furthering our exploration uh, amongst the stars. So I think that they would have, uh, hopefully looked up and, you know, out of their foxholes or out of their tents or whatever exercise they were doing and said, hey, someday it'd be neat to, to have a Marine up there. And, and here we are with, uh, with two Marines on board at this time, and we're very uh, proud to, of our heritage. It is very impressive, and the jokes still continue, so that's pretty awesome. What's the difference between commanding Marines on the ground and commanding in space? Well, Joe doesn't call me sir because he's you know, a civilian, and uh, so <laughs> no. But the, the the common bond amongst all of us, and even our, our Italian uh, crewmate, is a former Italian Special Forces, and we have a a Russian uh, fighter pilot on our crew, and it's that common bond of service where we all do have done something bigger than ourselves that allows us to do the same thing up here, not just for our service or for our country, but for our, our planet and for our species. And so uh, with everybody motivated towards that same goal, it's, it's not a problem uh, being a commander. It's, it's more of a, a cooperative, uh, everybody's working their tails off to accomplish the mission. So on, on that note, what is the, your mission exactly? Our mission is to uh, serve as a national science laboratory. We are up here uh, furthering the boundaries of science, uh, dedicated towards getting ourselves to be able to explore farther, but also to do research on things that help us out on the ground right now. So it, it is all about utilizing this place to further science. And uh, it's a very unique environment and a, uh, a huge accomplishment that we've been able to get this thing put together up here. It's, it sounds very impressive, and I hope that you guys accomplish everything you need to. 
Um, what are some of the examples of physical or mental battles that you've had to experience and overcome in order to um, go up into space? Yeah, so even though we're in this uh, microgravity environment and uh, you would think that you know, the physical aspect wouldn't be too much, it actually takes quite a bit, especially if you're going to go out and do something like a spacewalk. You need to be in really good shape. Uh, and then, of course, being in this environment, it has a big impact on our bones and muscles. So we're working out every day for a couple of hours, which is kind of nice to have the PT on the schedule. And then mentally, you know, we are in a in a type of deployment. You're away from family. You're away from all of that uh, kind of the lifestyle that you're used to. And every day you're doing something different and you don't know what the next day has in store for you. And you need to concentrate on everything you're doing pretty much all the time. So it, it is quite the mental challenge day in and day out, but uh, I think we're having a good time uh, living and working up here. It sounds like you guys are having a great time. I've seen some, some of the videos from up in space and it just, it all looks really amazing. Um, so I have another question and it comes from uh, Locate My New Home um, from Facebook. And, it, and they ask, what are your aspirations once you are retired from NASA? Um, that's a great question. Uh, there's always the age-old story of, of the young boy who goes to an air show with his father. And as the planes are going overhead, he pulls on his dad's arm, looks up, says, Daddy, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be a pilot. And, and the father looks down at his son and says, I'm sorry, son, you can't do both. Grow up and be a pilot. And, and I've been a pilot, you know, my entire Marine Corps career. And, uh, you know, I fly for NASA. We'll return from this flight and fly, you know, on the ground. And so... For me, I, I haven't quite decided, and I'm hoping I, I never have to grow up. So how long are you guys actually uh, up in space for? When, when are you coming back? Uh, our increment uh, aboard our Soyuz is leaving December 14th, and we'll have had about 140 days up here on the space station. Uh, I'll hand it over to Mark, and he can talk about uh, when his increment's going home. So our increment uh, started September 13th, and I believe we're going back around February 26th. Of course, I'm not as, quite as certain about that as Comrade's is about his date, because uh, his date is coming up much more quickly than mine. So I, I got a long time, and I'd rather uh, just focus on today. Totally understandable. So that is all the time that I have with you. Um, I do appreciate you talk, or appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today, and uh, I hope that your Thanksgiving is amazing. Uh, we thank you as well, and to all the Marines uh, at home or forward deployed, thank you for your service to our country, and Semper Fidelis. Semper Fi. All right, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this special live broadcast with Colonel Bresnik. I hope that you have a great day and a very happy Thanksgiving. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Marines media portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Soldiers TV. TV. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station. This is Houston ACR. Soldiers TV will be starting in about 20 seconds.
Sir, how are you? It's good to see you again. Hey, good to see you too, Sergeant Martin. How are you? How are you? I'm great. I would be so much better if I was there doing this interview live with you. That would be pretty cool. So, sir, we're going to get right to it because we only have a couple of minutes. So I would like, um, my producer would like me to ask you, if possible, if you can repeat the question um, and the, repeat my question in your answer if, for editing purposes. So my first question is going to be, why is it so important for the Army to have astronauts? It's so important for the Army to have astronauts because uh, we have always been uh, involved in exploration in the United States. In fact, the Corps of Engineers and the Army helped explore the western United States and uh, Lewis and Clark involved, the, their expeditions involved the Army. So I think uh, it, historically it uh, makes sense and it's something we're just continuing. There's a long tradition of it. Sir, we are so proud of you. We can't even begin to explain what it feels like for us to see you there. Could you tell us being on the International Space Station is and then fill in the fill in the blank. Being on the International Space Station is complex. It's both amazing, exhilarating, and well, it's not only amazing and exhilarating, it's also very challenging and uncomfortable at times. So it uh, it's a unique opportunity. Um, that requires constant attention, uh, but the, uh, it's, it's an amazing experience to be here. Sir, you told us when we um, interviewed you previously that the first thing you wanted to do when you got to space was go into the Coppola and look back at the Earth and see the view. Can you explain to us how was it? How did it make you feel? So, comrade up here, um, the commander for the space station, a retired U.S. Marine colonel, when I first got up here, he took me to the cupola to make sure I got that look. And uh, when I first looked out that window, it was what really struck me was how big the contrast was between the sunlit Earth and the absolute blackness of space. space. It made the Earth seem very isolated to me. That was the emotion I had. But the, the grandeur of the Earth was amazing. And did it, was it exactly what you expected? Uh, I couldn't have possibly expected it. It was, uh, it's something that I don't think you can even get your brain wrapped around when you're up here. It's, it's so immense that it's, it, it's really hard to process for at least my brain. So you recently conducted your first spacewalk. Can you explain what you did and how it felt to be floating out there in space? <laughs> Honestly, a little terrifying at first. Um, again, Comrade was uh, there um, along with me leading that spacewalk, and Joe here, um, another service member, prior, prior, previously a Marine. Um, Joe was in charge of the airlock, got both of us suited up. I'll never forget the moment when Comrade opened up the airlock and the, the sun from the Earth came up and lit that small compartment up. It suddenly felt like we were going to really go outside. And then floating outside isn't much different from floating inside except you have, you're a much more massive object when you're outside by about 300 additional pounds. And the fact that there's nothing between you and the earth but the, the uh, glass in your visor makes it uh, something that you pay a lot more attention to. Sounds amazing. We have one more request for you, sir. It's very simple. You've done it for us before. We'd like you to give us a space shout out. Go Army, beat Navy. Maybe some kind of cool little, you know, flippy do there with your, with your non-gravity. We've got to have it for the soldiers, sir. All right, here goes. Go Army, beat Navy. Sir, they said there was a little bit of an echo on my first question, so I'm going to restate it for you. Um, why is it important for the Army to have astronauts? It's important for the Army to have astronauts because it's a long-standing tradition that the Army participates in our nation's exploration. 
as far back as Lewis and Clark, we had Army officers, Army soldiers participating and pushing the boundaries of where humanity goes um, or exploring new territories. So uh, the fact that we have the Army consistently participating, it just continues that long history. Thank you, sir. And once again, being on the International Space Station is? Being on the International Space Station is complex. It's exhilarating, it's amazing, and it's also challenging and can be uncomfortable. It's a very unique environment we have up here to uh, accomplish a lot of science objectives, but that means, but you're also in a very inhospitable environment. We've got lots of science riding on us doing the right things, and our lives could be at stake if we do something incorrectly. So you have to always be paying attention but you sure can't beat the view. Sir, thank you so much. We are so proud of you. Thank you for being our representative. Thank you. Thanks for this time to do the interview. Appreciate it. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from Soldiers TV and Marines Media. Station, we are now resuming operational space to grounds.